Hello everyone, WABYA here, July 25th, 2017, and today we're going to have some fun measuring RF power using power meters and oscilloscopes and things like that. So what started this particular video was I was going to start working on some 40 meter phase verticals and I wanted to make some power measurements on the HF band. I was going to use my Old Faithful TS2000 for the purpose of this video. I'm not going to go on 40 meters, I'm just going to use 20 meters. Got it in the CW mode. 90 watts of power. So that way rig will be putting out a fairly stable single carrier CW signal. And what I did is I measured it on my Old Faithful Bird 43. This is an unmodified meter. And I happened to notice that I had several appropriate slugs 2 to 30 meg 100 watt rating. Two of them are actual birds and one of them is a coaxial dynamics. And I noticed two of them were fairly close to each other. One of them was reading a little bit high. And that's actually pretty normal. There's nothing wrong with seeing differences in readings because the meter itself and the slugs, they all have tolerances. And if a reading, if you're getting a 100 watt reading on one slug and 95 watts on another slug, that's actually within specification. So there's actually nothing wrong with that. But curiosity in me led me to wondering what is the real power and I was wondering if there was a way to to measure that power to determine which of the slugs is actually accurate and if there was a way to you know measure that power and without a power meter accurately maybe there's a some way uh, some way um, a ham or hobbyist can measure RF power using some equipment he or she may have down in the dungeon or shack uh, and to be able to do things like calibrate a, a slug or a or power meter. So what I'm going to do is just show you some different power readings using the Bird 43 a couple of different slugs. Also going to measure the power using a real old meter that I got here and I'm just throwing this in here just for fun this is like a 30 year old Wells power meter it's the first one I bought myself that it was VHF UHF capable it hasn't been calibrated in over 30 years so just for fun we'll we'll measure the power on it and I've got myself a, a pair of these MFJ power meters. And don't laugh too hard. I I purchased them because of the large meter face. My eyes are getting worse and worse as I get older, and I really kind of like the large meter face. And you know, when you're tuning up an amplifier and looking for a peak, we don't really care so much about the absolute accuracy of the power reading. We're just looking for a way to to obtain a peak. And uh, this works fairly good. And it's also a quick way to, to get the SWR reading of an antenna. I will warn you, the SWR pot is absolutely useless. It's way too critical. need to swap that out with a 10 turn pot or something like that. But this particular one the 868B and I've got a couple of them one there and one up there 
what I typically do is I'll I'll use one on HF with an Ameritron AL1200 and that'll easily put out 1500 watts and so that meter works good for, for it and then hidden back there is a Harris 6 meter solid state PA it's a channel 2 uh, power amplifier and so I'll have another meter hooked up to it where I can monitor the 6 meter power so we'll be grabbing RF power measuring it using some actual power meters but like I said of interest to me was measuring it different ways and so really the the primary purpose of the video is to measure RF power I always was wondering if you could use an oscilloscope a good quality calibrated oscilloscope to measure the RF power and by running some numbers with a calculator and testing things out I found out that in fact you, you can and I thought maybe it was kind of a a neat uh, we, uh, way to do that and I was going to share that with a video. Coming to find out there's actually a couple of videos already on YouTube doing this so um, this isn't anything unique or something that you haven't seen before but it's not something I had seen and uh, I thought it was pretty neat uh, um, to, to try it out here for myself so um, we're going to be using, this is a calibrated, uh, it's, a, it's not that old, Siglent SDS2202, it's good for a couple hundred mag, and certainly doesn't have any problem measuring the characteristics of a signal from the 20 meter band. You just want to make sure that your oscilloscope has adequate bandwidth at the frequency that you're going to be trying to measure the voltage to derive the actual power. You'll find that to be an issue as you move up higher and higher in frequency. So we're going to do that. We're going to use a spectrum analyzer to measure the power. and That's the most obvious way to measure RF power without the use of an actual watt meter and this also is still in calibration and I find it to be a very very accurate instrument this Siglent uh, spectrum analyzer I was able to verify its amplitude accuracy it's amazingly accurate um, they don't spec it to be that accurate but I found it to be within 0.05 dB at least at uh, at 50 megahertz. What I was able to do, I'll just quickly share this story with you. I've got a whole bunch of these Hewlett Packard power meters. This is one that we're going to be using today. It's a 435B. What they have is a RF output signal here that's used for calibration. Frequency stability is is not real good on on this generator, but the oscillator and amplifier stage that's used to develop that reference signal is designed to be fairly accurate and flat amplitude wise once it's properly aligned. What I was able to do, I've had a 435, I've got some 436s and things like that. Now we're fortunate here that we have an NIST traceable Cal Lab that serves a couple of large defense aerospace companies. And uh, knowing somebody in the lab stopped by during lunchtime and we had them measure the RF output amplitude on a real instrument, one of their calibrated NIST power meters and we went ahead and you know let the instruments warm up and I documented the power output 
of all of these power meters of that 50 meg signal. So after documenting temperature and line voltage, things like that, I rushed home and took that signal and I threw them on the signal and spectrum analyzer and I was really really impressed the analyzer was within 0.05 dB uh, worst case so it's still in Cal and that's a real good way to to measure the RF output power so we're going to be using the spectrum analyzer again we'll be using an oscilloscope this one is rated for 200 meg we'll be using the 435 power meter we do have we're fortunate to have a 8484A and this is a calibrated power meter uh, sensor that goes with that meter and as a surprise I'll show you a neat trick this is a Fluke AC-DC auto ranging voltmeter it's a model 8920A true RMS reading which means it'll measure the true RMS voltage of just about any waveform that you throw at it. It does not have to be a pure clean sine wave. The reason I got it along with being a really good bench voltmeter is it has this feature right here. It has a way of measuring the power and this meter has a bandwidth approaching 20 megahertz it lets me select the reference impedance that the power is going to be measured to in this case I've got it set to 50 ohms and it allows me to measure the power on a relative scale or an absolute scale by pressing either the relative or the DBM scale and that is really really a handy feature so what I do is I press uh, the button there so it's reading in DBM the key that a lot of people don't realize is you you must have a feed through connected to the input of the meter in this case this is a Tektronix 50 ohm feed through with that feed through the meter is going to see 50 ohms that's sel been selected to read 50 ohms and when you put in an RF signal, it's at 20 megahertz or less, it's deadly accurate, which I'll demonstrate in just a little bit. We'll put in a minus 20 dBm signal and you'll see it reads minus 20.00. So that's a very, very cool way of doing it. Also, we'll measure the RF power coming out of the Kenwood using a dedicated power meter just like the HP this one is made by uh, Boonton and I really love this meter it's very sensitive can read powers from plus 10 down to minus 50 I do need to calibrate it but surprisingly it matches what the HP power meter does it's rated up to 18 gigahertz and there's its power sensor right there so we'll do that and then something that a lot of people may not be aware of Moonton made some RF millivolt meters and they come in a couple of different flavors some of them are millivolt meters only and if you look at the selections on the right side you'll see that instead of dbm it'll say db volts and it'll be millivolts on the left side that's just a true rf voltmeter or a millivolt meter but it comes in a different variety and this one will have a dbm scale or a millivolt scale and you can measure either voltage or you can measure 
the actual RF power and this instrument right here I don't have the sensor connected to it but it has a bandwidth of that will go up to about 1200 megahertz so you can use it and it's highly highly accurate it's to within a tenth of a DB of what that is and what the HP power meter is so there's a bunch of ways to measure that now the way that do you do that if you're going to use the HP power meter or the specan or the micro watt meter anything like that you want to make sure that you're going to attenuate the signal because let's face it we're going to be putting 90 watts 100 watts from a rig and if you input that into any of those instruments you'll you'll blow the crap out of it real fast so what we're going to do is take advantage and we're going to use some attenuators to knock the signal down by a known amount before we input the signal into these sensitive uh, instruments here. And what I've done is for example this is a a bird 30 dB um, attenuator it's rated for 200 watts and I've already uh, characterized it it's like 30 point 08 dB I believe I'll have to look up my notes here but I've already measured it using the spectrum analyzer and the tracking generator so I know exactly what its attenuation is down to a, a hundredth of a dB and it is repeatable using something like the Siglent spectrum analyzer and its tracking generator I can measure that any time of the day or week or month and always come back and it'll always read I believe it's 30.08 we also are going to be using just a regular termination this is just a 50 ohm 150 watt bird termination and we're also going to take advantage of we're going to need to attenuate the signal even more than what this 30 dB attenuator can provide. We're going to knock it down even more with a 60 dB n-type attenuator. This one here happens to be made by Hewlett Packard. I measured it and at this frequency it's actually 60.10 dB of attenuation. So we'll be using that. And right there we've got a DC load or DC load we've got a 50 ohm load that's good from DC to 18 gigahertz so I'll show you how to use that and then just a couple of quick adapters here a couple of good quality RF uh, adapters so let's get started and I'll show you a couple of neat ways to measure RF power let's start with getting these out of the way real quick we'll show you what the Wells meter and the MFJ meter and the bird watt meter show and then we'll get into some of the more fun ways to measure RF power using the attenuators and some instruments like uh, the Boonton micro watt meter maybe the fluke volt meter that has some power measuring capability and we'll use the specian and my favorite which is really cool technique is to use the oscilloscope to measure the peak to peak voltage coming out of the rig and we'll go through some calculations and show you how you can derive the the RF power and keep in mind the bird watt meter measures the average power this is an unmodified bird 43 watt meter it's not been modified to read the peak to peak power or anything like that and so this is just an average reading meter 
and keep that in mind. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so first up, since it's already right there, we're going to be measuring the MFJ power meter coming off the back of the radio. We got a short piece of our G8 coming out of the power meter, some RG8X. Got it going through a small adapter, going right into the small dummy load. We'll go ahead and put the uh, the rig in uh, CW mode. We'll put it into uh, the tune position, or we'll actually P, P, do a PTT, key up the radio. And look at that. Who would have guessed? That's like 91 watts. Once the finals keep warming up like that, it'll actually come down pretty close to, to 90 watts. So, who would have guessed an MFJ power meter, like measuring pretty close to what the rig says, 90 watts. All right, let's move on, see what the Wells does. Okay, next up is the Wells 350. I've got it on the HF port, the low frequency sensor. And let's go ahead and keep the radio. We're going to be looking at that scale that goes up to 200 watts there, measuring the forward power. And look at that, pretty close too. Looks like about 85, 86 watts. So, you know, for a 30, 35 year old meter that hasn't been calibrated 85 watts or so, that's not too terribly far off. That's just uh, just over 5% error. So, and this particular meter is fairly easy to calibrate on the inside. So, I may just do that. So, there you go. Let's go ahead and hook up one of the birds next. And we'll measure the three slugs here. Okay, next up is the Bird 43 watt meter with the first slug. Since we have three of them, why don't we call them uh, Leary, Moe, and Curly. So, let's measure Larry here. We'll throw him in the tune position. Look at that. Well over 100 watts. Rig is set to, to 90, but we're reading over 100, so, huh, let's measure the next one. Alright, so we got Mo in here now, nothing else has changed, let's go ahead and put the radio in the transmit mode, try to get lined up in front of the meter. There we go. So it looks like 98 watts. So there we go. Just over 98. Let's remember that. All right. Last is Curly. Nothing else has changed here. Get lined up in front of the meter. Throw him in tune. Looks like about 99 watts. So, some slight deviation between the three slugs. And, you know, they still all could be within tolerance. The one that was over 100 watts, well, that's actually over 10%. So, that one, that one uh, probably is out of spec. But these last two, Moan Curly, are probably just within specification. But you can see that there is deviation between them. So that's kind of what started this mission of mine, is I wanted to know, well, which one is telling the truth? So we've got various power meters and they're all showing different things. So now let's go ahead, have some fun, and let's measure, let's take this RF 90 watt RF signal, or at least what we think is 90 watts, and let's measure it with some of these different instruments over here. 
and in particular I'm looking forward to trying it on the oscilloscope. One thing that I do want to mention what I do when I make these measurements is I start out with a known RF signal generator in this case way back in the corner there I've got an HP 8662 it's an old workhorse done very very well for me and I've got him set to minus 20 dBm the RF output comes out of the back so I've got a short jumper of RG142 cable I've got it going through a JFW step attenuator I've characterized it and it's an amazing attenuator because at the 0 dB setting there's less than a easily less than a tenth of a dB insertion loss use the semi-rigid uh, SMA connectors to interface the two attenuators in the back anyway I've gone ahead and I've got a chart and it shows me what the actual attenuation is of all the different steps and everything but everything right now is set to zero so we're putting out close to zero or uh, minus 20 dBm signal and what I've done is first thing I do is verify that the spectrum analyzer we're going to be using is accurate and you can see right there it is so I have a lot of confidence that the siglent is is working correct I'm also going to take that same exact minus 20 dBm signal. We're going to put it into the to the HP power meter. We're also going to put it into the fluke voltmeter, which we now know is capable of measuring RF power. And I really, really encourage you if you can get a hold of one of these meters. They're they're really awesome. And then we're going to verify it with a, uh, a Boonton uh, microwatt meter. So let's get started on that. Okay, so this is a quick picture. Java the Mutt, since I'm a Star Wars fan. Java, Java says it's time to go outside. So we got to take a break here. We'll be right back. But before we do, I'm going to show you real quick We've got the minus 20 dBm signal going into the HP power meter, which is my golden standard. We're on the minus 20 dB scale, and you can see right there, it's like one hair under minus 20 dBm. So each one of those divisions is two tenths of a dB halfway between would be a tenth so you know it's like minus 20.04 dBm so that's close enough we can call that minus 20.03 or minus 04 dBm we've already verified the spec scan it's happy with minus 20.00 let's go ahead and after we let Java the Mud outside, we'll verify it on these other two meters over here. All right, Java says thank you very much for letting me take a break and letting him go outside. He's the lab manager here. He runs the show. So we've got the same spigot connected up to the Boonton microwatt meter. Got him going up here. We've got the minus 20 dBm button pushed in. We're going to be reading that top red scale. And as you can see, again, each one of those divisions is two tenths of a dB. So it's reading almost exactly what the Hewlett Packard power meter is reading. Looks like it's minus 20 point I'll call it 05 <laughs> so what I'm trying to do here the reason I'm doing this is establishing that all of my meters that I'm going to be using are in agreement with each other and that 
at least I think they're in calibration. The reason for that, the reason it's so important is when you're going to try to measure the RF output power of a radio, every, not only the tenth of a dB difference that you measure, but down to the hundredth of a dB is going to make a difference. A couple of hundredths of a dB at this power level can equate to one or two watts difference. So you want to be as absolutely accurate as you can be. Uh, if your instruments will support that accuracy, take the time, give it time to warm up, and try to make your measurements down, down to the hundredth if you can. Even though the instruments may not be rated for that kind of accuracy, chances are that you know you, you can make repeatable measurements in that range and uh, as you'll see it um, it works out pretty good so let's go ahead now let's move on to the to the fluke meter here we'll see what it what it registers for for a power reading okay so now I've got a short RG223 jumper going up and look at that minus 19 point toggling between 9697 and it's going to actually settle on 97 so within three one hundredths of a DB the fluke meter is able to measure the RF power coming from the 8662 so so far we're what we're doing is we're building up a baseline we're building up our confidence that our various meters are all in agreement with each other that's what the purpose of this little pretest is so now that we've got confirmation that every one of our meters is capable of measuring the same, in this case, minus 20 dBm signal, which is going to be very close to what we end up with um, by the time we attenuate the signal. We should have fairly accurate results. So what I've done here now, we've taken the, this in this case it's a piece of LMR 400 coax. We've got it going through the uh, 30 dB back off a little bit so it'll be easier to to see what uh, what we've got going on so in this case like I said we've got the 90 watt signal that we're trying to measure it's going through the 30 DB bird attenuator it's been characterized we know it's exactly 30.08 DB of insertion loss. It's a 30.08 dB attenuator. And connected to the output of it, we've got it going to a 60 dB uh, Hewlett Packard uh, pad. And in this case it's been characterized to be exactly 60.10. So let's go ahead and connect him up to some of the sensitive meters now and let's see what they measure. Okay, gonna try to move this along. I don't want to put anybody to sleep. We've got the 90 watts or so that we're trying to measure, 90 to 100 watts, we're not sure. Got it going through a couple of attenuators. We've got it going to directly into the Boonton RF sensor. And then we've got it going up to the microwatt meter. Let me go ahead and zoom up on him. I've moved the selector to the minus 40 dBm scale because we've got about 90 dB. We've got the 60 dB pad and a 30 dB pad, so we've got about 90 dB of attenuation. You know, 90 watts to 100 watts, getting very close to a 50 
dBm signal so I wanted to make sure we had plenty of attenuation. So we throw that into tune and there you go that's about minus half a dB call it minus 0.55 if I count that little wiggle so minus 40.55 dBm is what the microwatt meter is showing now online there's a lot of cool calculators available and you can do this on pencil and paper it's easy enough but I've gone ahead and put in a value of 49.55 dBm and that ends up with about 90 watts but let's keep in mind what that number that we ended up with as a matter of fact let me write that down we ended up with minus 40.55 minus 40.555 dBm. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here's a little back of the napkin calculations. We measured minus 40.55 dBm on the Boonton power meter. We have to add the 60.1 dB attenuation from the HP attenuator plus we add 30.08 dB from the bird attenuator we end up with a positive 49.63 dBm RF signal that calculates out to 91.8 watts so there you go let's remember that number as well so far it's looking like what the Kenwood is saying 90 watts I would trust this number right here a whole bunch. So it looks like it's uh, just shy of 92 watts. So let's go ahead and measure it uh, a couple of different ways. See what kind of numbers we end up with. Okay, so now we've got instead of the Boonton microwatt meter, we've got a short piece of RG223. We've got it going into the Fluke meter. I've got him set up to register DBM. Let's go ahead and key up the radio. And it looks like it's going to be minus 40.5. Yeah, let's call it 5.2. Alright, let's write that down. Okay, so that bottom line is the minus 40.52 we measured on the fluke. The same attenuation constants, we end up with 49.66 and we end up with 92.5 watts. This is the point I wanted to make. Notice right here the difference between these two dBm values. We're only off, the difference between them is three hundredths of a dB. And look at the difference in the wattage that it makes. We've gone from 91.8 watts up to 92.5 watts. So, even two or three hundredths of a dB can equate to quite a few watts at this power level. So, you want to be very, very careful. Take your time. Make sure your equipment is warmed up and um, don't be afraid to remeasure things and get good accurate numbers because if you're off in these numbers it'll have a pretty significant effect on your your final outcome alright let's uh, throw it into the HP power meter just for giggles okay so now we've got the same exact setup going through the two pads we're going directly into the HP 8484 calibrated sensor making its way around to the HP power meter we've got him set to the minus 
40 dBm scale. And please forgive my wiggling around here. It's just impossible to mount this on a tripod and to move around all over the place. I'm going to go ahead and throw that into tune. See if I can get in front of the meter. And it looks like, you know, I'll call it 0.55 also. I'll call that minus 40.55 dBm. So let's write that down. Okay, next up is going to be the same exact setup. We're going through the 30 dB, 60 dB. We've got our microwave cable coming up directly to the signal and spec in. This particular case, rather than doing averaging or anything like that, I've got it in a max hold mode. So let me go ahead and key him up. Alright, there we go. Minus 40.5. Five four looks like there we go minus point five four so okay I trust this instrument a lot along with the HP power meter so let's write this down minus forty point five four okay the very top line is going to be for the Siglent spec in we get minus 40.54 plus all the same attenuation factors we end up with 49.62 and we end up with 91.6 watts so we've got those documented now let's move on to the um, oscilloscope let's see what we get here slightly different setup we're going to use and I'll show you that Okay, here's our final setup here. We haven't changed anything on the rig. Coming out with a piece of LMR 400. We've got to go into a NT adapter. We go ahead and run one port into a 50 ohm termination. In this case, rated for 150 watts. The other port is going to go to our scope probe. I've got it set to the times 10 position. I've got a uh, probe to BNC adapter. And we've got it going directly up to the Siglent oscilloscope. And what I've done is I've asked it to give me a measurement of the peak to peak and the RMS values. Please make sure when you do this that you've got your scope set up for times 10 probe. And most importantly, make sure that you've got the impedance set to the 1 meg position. Do not use 50 ohm position. Very good chance that you will fry your, your soul scope for an end if you do that. So, let's go ahead and... Uh, up. Hard to do. There we go. There's 192 volts peak to peak. So let's go ahead and document that. Okay, so using the Siglent oscilloscope, we measured 192 volts peak to peak. And that comes out to 92.16 watts. So we go ahead and we'll draw that over there. So as you can see, using a lot of different instruments, I'm going to go ahead and add on here what we measured with the MFJ meter and the Wells meter and the bird slugs. But it sure looks like a number around 92 watts Is the real number you know if you've got a whole bunch of instruments and they're reading something and you've got another instrument that in this particular case we had one bird slug that was measuring well over a hundred and the other ones were 
know my memory's going already. I think there were around well, I'll have to go back somewhere around 95, 98 watts, something like that. Looks like they were reading a little bit high. Still within tolerance, those two were. Anyway, if I haven't put you to sleep yet, let me just show you real quick what you need to know to be able to take a peak-to-peak -peak voltage measurement on your cell scope and to be able to calculate the wattage. So, <clears throat> here we go. This is, I'm going to go through this very, very quickly. So, just remember, using Ohm's Law, we're able to come up with a formula, power is equal to E squared over R. In this case, R is going to be assumed here to be 50 ohms resistive. We're not going to be talking about any impedance here. We want R to be resistive. There's no reactance. We're going to make our life easy here. We're not going to get into any vector math or anything like that. And E is the RMS voltage in this formula. So we don't want the voltage measured in RMS voltage because we just measured the peak-to-peak -peak voltage and the reason, there's a reason why we use peak-to-peak -peak voltage it goes back to the days when some of us had to use instruments like this I was going to do a quick measurement using this old beauty this is an old Tektronics, probably 40 year old 7000 series. It's a 7704. It's got a 400 megahertz bandwidth. These particular plugins don't give us any kind of readouts, automatic readouts, the way these new digital scopes do and everything. So, what we used to have to do is we'd get the waveform up here and we would count how many divisions the waveform would be. But to keep this video short, I'm not going to run the input into the scope. I'd set it up I was going to, but I'm, I'm not going to because I really don't want to put you to sleep. So the idea was to get the most accurate measurement, we would try to fill this screen up as high as possible. We would try to make the sine wave or whatever waveform we were measuring go as high as possible so that we could interpolate between the divisions as accurately as possible and get the most accurate number so that's why I like using the peak-to-peak -peak voltage I guess it's just a carryover from when I was cutting my teeth as a as a young Tempest engineer this scope by the way is from the company that I started with many many years ago this company called Atlantic Research Corporation there in Virginia so that was a big, uh, big Tempest house, and that was where I started working. So it's kind of neat that I got an oscilloscope from way back then that I probably used on the job, and it's uh, almost in new condition. Probably could use a calibration, though. So anyway, let's get back to this so I don't lose you. So here we go. Uh, Let's move this down. So remember also that the bird watt meter measures average power. It doesn't measure peak to peak power in this case. It doesn't it hasn't been converted or anything like that. It was just a stock 43 that measures average power. Okay. So if you're going to be using the oscilloscope and peak to peak voltages, the power formula needs a conversion factor applied to it. Now it's not a correction factor, it's actually a conversion factor because we're changing units. So, the conversion factor converts the RMS voltage to the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. So, here we go. This is going to go quick. We know that the peak voltage is equal to square root of 2 times the RMS voltage. That's a given. 
So if we know that, we know that 2 times the peak voltage is going to be equal to 2 times that on the right. And so 2, peak to, two times the peak is equal to 2 times square root of 2 times VRMS. Now, the reason that works is this. In this case, we were just using a simple carrier, a very clean sine wave, and we know that the peak voltage is defined to go from the baseline, or in this case, zero volts, up to the maximum positive going peak, or it could be the negative going peak, but in this case, this drawing, I'm showing it going to the positive. So the peak voltage is just from the baseline up to the maximum it'll go. In a nice clean sine wave, the peak to peak voltage is going to be from the very, very top to the very, very bottom of that sine wave. And in this case, it's just going to be two times the peak voltage. So that's where we get that from. The peak to peak voltage is just two times the peak. And that's all that's saying right there. So, two times the peak voltage is equal to the peak to peak voltage. We just saw that. All right. So now here we go. The peak to peak voltage we know is two times the square root of two times the RMS voltage. Rearranging that little equation, we know that the VRMS voltage is going to be equal to the peak to peak voltage divided by two times the square root of two. Easy peasy. No problem at all. So we take that and we substitute it, the voltage RMS, in place of E because we want peak to peak voltage, not RMS voltage. So all we do is we take this V peak to peak divided by 2 times square root of 2 and we substitute it in place of E. Okay. Now, what I've done is, in this next step, I've taken the R and I've already converted it to 50 ohms. So you'll notice there's no R in this middle term here. I've already made the assumption that R is going to be 50 ohms in our case. So this equation here, now that this has been substituted, ends up being simply the voltage peak to peak squared divided by the quantity 2 times the square root of 2 squared divided by 50. Well that simplifies pretty easily to the peak to peak voltage squared divided by 4 times 2 all divided by 50 in the denominator. And we get the 4 times 2 from the 2 squared times square root of 2 squared. So that equals 4 times 2. Alright. See, nothing complicated. All straightforward. So, simplifying where we can, that just ends up being that the power is equal to the V peak to peak squared divided by 8 times 50, since this is a 50 ohm system. If it were something other than 50 ohms, you would change that in the denominator accordingly. And then multiplying that out, we end up with V peak to peak squared divided by 400. So, that's all I did. I derived that formula because I like working in peak to peak voltages. And in our case, we measured the peak to peak voltage of 192 volts. Therefore, the power is 192 squared divided by 400 equals 92.16 watts. So, there you have it. So, I hope you found this video interesting because it shows us a way that we can measure the RF output out of a transmitter or an amplifier by using a whole host of different instruments one of them being an oscilloscope and if your oscilloscope is accurate and it's in calibration you can use it to make very very accurate RF power measurements as I've indicated here. So I'm actually going to use this technique to calibrate some of my 
some of my bird slugs because I know now that some of them are off. Does it really matter in the end if one is reading 95 and one is reading 102? Not one bit. Makes absolutely no difference in the world. It's just my uh, my weirdness. <laughs> it's just the way I am. I'm going to calibrate them because it's a fun experiment and I want my slugs to read the same thing. So, And if I can get them to read accurately the same number, then I'll be happy. All right. So I apologize for making this video real long, but I just wanted to show you a bunch of different ways of doing it and ways to verify your watt meter's accuracy. Remember, in this case, we were using just a simple CW carrier, and we were measuring the, the average power on the Bird 43s. So if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, and I appreciate any comments or feedback, and feel free to email me if, if you want something private. Uh, I'll be happy to, uh, to help you out. Uh, 73 from WABYA.